All right, we're going to look at a couple examples with force and kinetic energy, in particular breaking force, and then we'll look at an example of potential energy, which will be a spring. So if this car is stopping over a certain distance, in the first instance, 200 feet, you, you have the mass of the car, it's traveling 55 miles an hour, 24.6 meters per second, Stopping over 200 feet or 61 meters, what is the braking force? In this case, we're using this equation down here where the work is equal to the negative force times the distance, and we're setting that equal to the change in kinetic energy, which is one half mv squared. Now, once we have that relationship, we've got enough information to calculate the kinetic energy because we have the mass and the velocity. We know the stopping distance. We just need to solve it for the force. It's, it's negative because I'm stopping and the work is opposing the direction of the motion of the car. So in this case, the force is going to be equal to negative mv squared over 2 d. And I'm just taking the one half and just moving the two to the denominator with the d. Then it's just plug and chug. You got a negative 1985 kilograms. And then you're going to multiply that by the velocity 24.6 meters per second quantity squared and then divided by two times the distance in our case 61 meters. And so then our braking force will just be the result of that calculation, 1985 times 24.6 squared divided by 2 times 61. You get a negative, essentially 9850, we'll say to three sig figs. Newtons, and so that's the braking force. We're stopping a car, so we'd expect a big number, so there's, that's not a big deal. Second part is if I stopped over a little bit longer distance, what would be the braking force? So 140 feet or, or 400 feet or 122 meters. So essentially it's just the same calculation again. And same mass on the car but I'm stopping over a longer distance. So the kinetic energy change is the same, but the force applied needs to be less because I'm stopping over a larger distance and I don't need as much force. So you're gonna run the calculation again, except you're going to put 122 meters instead of 61 and you need about half as much force, which is not surprising at all. Now I'm rounding off just a little bit, so it's not quite half and half, but you need about 4,920 Newtons. So let's look at the next problem. This is a case of potential energy in the case of a spring. You got a 500 gram mass, undergoing simple harmonic motion when placed at the end of a spring of 800 Newton meters. If the motion takes place on a frictionless horizontal surface, the speed of the mass is 12 meters per second as it passes through the equilibrium point. So we want to know the kinetic energy at the equilibrium point. That is when all the potential has been converted to kinetic, it's going to be one half mv squared, and so you're going to just plug in your numbers, one half the mass, we're going to go to kilograms, so 0 0.500 kilograms times the velocity of 12 meters per second, and it's squared. So 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 12 squared is going to be 36 joules. Now, ideally speaking, the potential should equal the kinetic. So the potential energy of the spring 
which should equal the kinetic energy that was imparted because you'll have maximum kinetic energy at the equilibrium point should be one half kx squared where k is your spring constant x is the displacement and that's actually what we're trying to find is how far we're trying to find this displacement so solving for x x will be two times the potential energy divided by the constant square root of the whole thing just algebraically solving for x squared and then you take the square root to get x by itself so we get two times 36 joules divided by 800 Newton per meter. So then we're gonna say two times 36 divided by 800, and then we're gonna square root that whole thing. And so it's gonna displace 0 0.3 meters, which if you multiply that by 100, we're talking 30 centimeters of displacement. So this has been a little tutorial on potential and kinetic energy and working in force and work as well.